Hello, and welcome to Typing Club School Edition. This video will provide you with the basics to get you and your students going in your Typing Club account. The first thing you should do when you sign up for Typing Club School Edition is register your students and set up your classes. If you have created this account, make sure to use our tutorials to learn more about how to get your student and class data into your Typing Club account. If you have been added to a larger account, check with your administrator to find out whether your class and student data has been added for you, or if you should still upload that data on your own. Every Typing Club School Edition account has a custom login URL. This unique URL belongs only to your account, and everyone in your account will use it to sign in. First, let's take a look from the student's perspective. For students to sign into the school account, they must go to the same URL that you use to access the account. Then they can use the username and password you set for them. On the left side of the page, you can see the options Home, Stats, Change Password, and Log Out. Underneath is an overview of their total activity. On the right side of the page, you can see the lesson plans and tests assigned to that student. By clicking on a lesson plan, you are directed to see an overview of each lesson in the lesson plan and the student's performance if the lesson has been completed. This layout is very familiar to students because it is similar to popular games, with different levels to complete and stars to earn. The lessons are designed to be short and to provide students with instant feedback that motivates them to keep making attempts. If a student gets two stars on a lesson, they can instantly retry the lesson and achieve three stars. This is tangible learning, and it encourages students to keep attempting lessons over and over until they get five stars on a lesson before moving on. If they look at the top of the page, they can see the total number of stars they have earned in this lesson plan, the percent of lessons completed in this lesson plan, as well as their total score. They can also view the scoreboard, which ranks the class in order of achievement to promote healthy competition. The scoreboard's visibility can also be controlled on the instructor side. Now I'm going to click on the first lesson to show you the student experience. The first slides of the lesson give a little background on how to approach the keyboard and sit during typing. After clicking through these slides, the student can start typing the actual text of the lesson. I'm going to attempt this lesson now. As I type, mistakes are highlighted in red. If I use the backspace, they are highlighted in yellow to indicate that they have been corrected. Corrected letters will be counted as correctly typed in the gross accuracy, but will appear in the adjusted accuracy after I have completed the lesson. Now that I have finished the lesson, I can see how many stars I earned on the lesson. I can also see the requirements for the lesson as compared to my performance. You can see the minimum required accuracy of 80%, with at least 14 words per minute needed to pass, and with 18 words per minute as the goal. Below, you can see how I'm progressing as I repeat each lesson over and over. Now I can click on the next lesson to move forward. As the student types, he or she gets instant visual feedback that helps teach proper form and gives positive reinforcement for good performance. You can see as I attempt this lesson that I can also control whether I want to see the virtual hands and keyboard. Aside from the typing experience, students can also view their stats and past attempts. The stats page is helpful for students to see and share how they've been performing in the lesson plan. They can view their overall stats, play back each individual attempt, see a long-term overview of their activity, and look at a chart that shows their typing speed improvement over time. Typing speed is measured in words per minute, or WPM. Students can log into their account with their parents and show them how they've been keeping up with practicing their typing skills. As you start using Typing Club to teach your class, the most important tasks for you as an instructor are to make sure your students aren't looking at their hands when they type and to encourage them to get all five stars before moving on to the next lesson. We recommend that students practice about 10 minutes per day or about 40 minutes per week to make it through the entire 100 lessons of the basic lesson plan in one semester. Now I'm going to sign in as an instructor. I still need to go to the same custom URL and use my email address as my username and my chosen password. When you log in, you see a general report on your classes. If you scroll down, you can also see the live attempts as students are working on lessons. You can replay each of these lessons or see the overview of how the student performed on the attempt. This can be especially useful if you are monitoring students who are working from home. Once you sign in, you'll want to go to your class. 
I'm going to click on Classes to see the list of my classes. You can see a quick view of activity in each class denoted by the grade bar chart. Once I click on a class, I have the same live activity feed as on the main page, but specific to this class. If you are in the computer lab, you can even project this onto the board for the whole class to see in real time as they are working in the lesson plan. Each class has three main tabs, the Manage Class tab, the Lesson Plan tab, and the Reports tab. Within the Manage Class tab, you can view the class enrollment. If you need to add or unsubscribe students, you can do so here, either individually or in groups of existing students. When I click on the Instructors link, I can add or remove instructors assigned to this class. By choosing the Lesson Plans link, I can see the lesson plan assigned to this class. If I wanted to create my own custom lesson plan, I could add it to the class and then remove the existing lesson plan here. I could also add an advanced or alternate lesson plan to the class as an option for students who have finished their assigned lessons to work on for extra practice. Using the Edit Class link, I can access some options like disabling the scoreboard, hiding the instant feedback that students see as they type, disabling backspace, and preventing students from jumping ahead in the lesson plan. You can email your students to let them know how to log into the account. The email includes personalized instructions with your account URL and their individual username and password. You can also generate login instructions here. Clicking this link will generate a single page with your class's information that you can cut up and hand out to your students to help them log into the account. The last option here is the parent letter. This will generate a letter for each student in the class that has a little information about how your students are using Typing Club to learn typing, and how that specific student can log into the account at home. You can also edit or add to the document before generating the letter for your class. The most important tab for managing your student's progress is the Lesson Plan tab. Once you click the Lesson Plan tab, you are presented with a scoreboard. This is the same scoreboard your students can see within their interface. You can see the top student in the class, their score, stars earned, time spent practicing, number of attempts made, average accuracy, average words per minute speed, and their progress through the lesson plan. Clicking any of these headers will sort this chart based on that field. You can also break this down based on each attempt by this student in this class by clicking on the Per Lesson button. You can also see any student's account information by clicking on their name. One of the most helpful reports you can use to monitor your class is the Student Progress Chart. Once I click on the link, I am presented with a graphic representation of how my students are doing in the lesson plan for this class. On the left-hand side, there is a list of all the students, and on the top, there is the list of the lessons within the lesson plan. The blocks are color-coded, so that if you see blue, it means that this student has achieved five stars on the corresponding lesson. If you see any shade of gray, they have achieved less than five stars. Since the requirements for the lessons get increasingly more difficult, you can see how students who don't get five stars before moving on tend to fall off until they cannot complete lessons at all because they haven't learned the necessary skills. If you hover over a square, you can see more information about that student's attempts on that lesson, including how many times they attempted it, how long they spent practicing it, and stars earned. This chart is extremely useful to see whether your class is achieving all five stars before moving on. If they are not, you might want to restrict the class so that they can't move past a certain lesson. To do this, click on the Lesson Plans tab and click the words Not Limited. There you can set limits to help your students earn all five stars before moving on. If you find that your class is progressing through your lesson plan too quickly or too slowly, you can also alter the minimum words per minute requirement for the whole lesson plan. To do this, select the words Normal Difficulty. You can increase or decrease the minimum words per minute requirement to pass each lesson in this lesson plan. For example, if the lesson plan is set to a 5 words per minute pass requirement, adding 3 words per minute here will increase the difficulty of the lesson so that the students must now get at least 8 words per minute to pass. If you find that only a few students are working faster or slower than the rest of the class, you can also adjust the words per minute requirements on a per student basis. Let's click on the scoreboard again. Next to each student's name, you can see the column name Difficulty. Clicking here will also allow you to alter the minimum words per minute requirement for each lesson in the lesson plan. If you wish to check the minimum words per minute requirement of a particular lesson in the lesson plan, you can click the Lesson Plan link and select the name of the lesson plan. Now, let's select the Lessons tab. Here is a list of all the lessons, their minimum and goal words per minute requirements, 
and their minimum accuracy requirements. You can try typing any lesson from your account to see exactly what your students will experience as they practice. Another way to monitor your students is by using the reports. If you are interested in seeing how much time students spend practicing on a daily or weekly basis, you can use the weekly time report or the daily time report. You can specify the dates for the report and set rules for highlighting based on time spent practicing. To see a summary of your class performance as a whole, the Activity Summary Report offers class-wide metrics such as average accuracy for the whole class or the sum of time spent practicing by all students in the class. Now that we've gone through the majority of options under the Classes tab, let's click on the Students tab. Here you will see all of the students in your class and school. If your students are not already there, you can add them individually or in groups, and there are a few different methods for doing so. Please consult our short tutorials on how to add single students or upload groups of students using a CSV file. Next, let's visit the Lesson Plans tab. You can see there is one default lesson plan. While this standard lesson plan should satisfy most, if not all, of your needs, you can always modify the text, change the difficulty, and edit other features of this lesson plan by clicking on it and exploring the various settings. Just be aware that any changes you make to the original lesson plan will be reflected in every class that has been assigned this lesson plan. You can also create additional lesson plans from scratch to completely tailor your students' class activities. Currently, approximately 30% of our teachers create their own lesson plans. This concludes our overview of how to use Typing Club School Edition. Thanks for watching!